In this video, I want to break down the mechanics within Anki that make it possible for you to import images automatically. Now, let's pull back the curtain on how images are handled within Anki. The most basic method for getting images into your flashcards is the tried and true method of simple copy and paste, or screen clip and paste if you prefer. All we have to do is paste that image into whichever field we want it to go in, and that's it. If we click on these brackets in the upper right hand corner here, we can open the HTML editor. And when we do, we see these mysterious hieroglyphics appear down here in the bottom. This is an HTML link. This is the key to being able to automatically import your images with your flashcards. When we manually paste an image into a field within Anki, Anki saves the image within the collection.media folder, which is located in the bowels of your Anki app. And it creates a link, this HTML link, to this exact file. So your image really isn't even in this flashcard at all. It's just this link, which summons the image from the depths so that it appears in the flashcard when you're reviewing it. The collection.media folder is where all of the media for your flashcards is stored, whether it's images, video files, backgrounds, fonts, you name it. It all goes to this one place. And we can manually add files to the collection.media folder if we know how to get there. I'll include a link in the video description to the Anki manual, which will explain how you can find it. Once you find it, I recommend pinning it to the sidebar because it just makes it a lot easier. This is important because it gives us a backdoor method of placing images within our flashcards. Say I take this screenshot. Now I'm gonna save this file and give it a name that I can remember. Then I'll drop it into the collection.media folder. Then if I simply place an HTML link into one of these fields, an image appears. It's important to note that the link has to include the exact file name if we're off by a little bit, then we're gonna see this little page icon here, which tells us that there's a link to an image within this flashcard, but there's no image found with that name in the collection.media folder. Okay, I know what some of you are thinking. How is this faster than just copying and pasting an image into Anki? And the answer is it's really not, if you're manually creating one flashcard at a time. So if you use flashcard creation, the act of creating a flashcard as part of your study routine, then none of this is gonna be helpful for you at all. You should just keep doing it the manual way and go in peace, my spacebar smashing friend. But if you're like me and would rather spend your time arguing with a robot rather than manually making flashcards, you can have ChatGPT create some Python scripts to do all the dirty work for you. Let me show you an example of how one might apply this backdoor method of HTML links. And keep in mind, this is just one use, one example. There are lots of different ways that you can use this, but I can think of no better way of showing you how to do this than by using Pokemon as an example. So I asked the robot to write me a script that would fetch all of the sprites for all of the Pokemon from generation one through nine. And to do this, I use the free Poke API, which is really cool. And you can gather all kinds of Pokemon data using an API, which is <laughs> the nerdiest thing I think I've ever done. <laughs> there are over a thousand Pokemon these days. It ended up taking a hot minute to get all of those images downloaded, which is why this flashcard deck is gonna come in handy. All right, so now I've downloaded all of the images that I'm gonna be using in my flashcards and I've saved them to this folder using a very simple naming convention where each file name contains the Pokemon's number so that all of the images are in the correct order. And this will make it so that when I generate all of the HTML links using an automation, all of the links are created in the correct order and that all of the image links are placed or associated with the appropriate flashcard. It's really important that you have some way of cataloging all of your images if you plan on using an automation to generate your HTML links, which I highly recommend. So let's pull up here just a blank untitled spreadsheet within Google Sheets. I like using spreadsheets whenever I'm batch creating flashcards and whether I'm creating them manually or using something like a custom GPT to create flashcards, I'll usually organize them in a spreadsheet such that each column represents a field within the flashcard template that I'm using. So for this example, I'm gonna be using a flashcard that has four different fields, a question field, an image field, a type field, and a name field. So right here in this image column, this is where I need to put all of the HTML links to the specific images that I want to show up in my flashcards. 
Now you could manually type out all of the HTML links that you're going to be using, but that sounds like a lot of work and goes against everything I stand for. But it would end up looking something like this. Here you can see each of the HTML links, including the HTML markup, with the exact name of the images that they correspond to. So now I have my image field totally taken care of. All of the links that I'm going to be using are here. You may be wondering, how did I get all of these HTML links so quickly? You know, I have exactly 1,010 of them. The truth is I used a Python script that I had ChatGPT write in order to generate all of these HTML links. And that is exactly what I recommend you do as well. All right, so now all I have to do is fill out all of these other fields that I'm gonna be using in my flashcards. But I'm gonna be honest with you, I am not gonna do this manually um, in any way, shape or form. I'm going to go back to ChatGPT and have it create another script that will access the Pokey API and extract all of the Pokemon types and all of the Pokemon names. And then I'm gonna include some logic within this script to also generate all of the questions that I want to be associated with each of these flashcards. I'm only gonna use one question, so it's gonna be really simple. But to kind of demonstrate what this would look like in a spreadsheet form, here is all of the information. So this is what my final spreadsheet would look like if I were building them kind of on my own within Google Spreadsheets. I, however, skipped this step entirely by having the Python script just automatically generate the CSV file so that it was, you know, ready to go, ready to upload into Anki. Okay, with all of my data and all of my images, I am now ready to make these flashcards. The next thing I have to do is select all of my images and just drag them and drop them into the collection.media folder. We are now ready to import our flashcards into Anki. So I drag my CSV file over into Anki. I make sure all of the fields line up appropriately and then click import. And faster than you can say copyright infringement, we've got 1,010 flashcards with images. My daughter's gonna think I am so cool. And she's right. So this was just a simple exercise to demonstrate how you can use HTML links to be able to get all of your images associated with your flashcards before you import them. If you have the right resources, this can make it super easy to batch create a lot of flashcards. It's a major part of the automation that I use to create flashcard decks from entire textbooks in a single whack. But there are some very important points to consider when you're trying to make this work. For one thing, you have to have a clear way of organizing and cataloging all of your images. This means that there may be some resources where HTML links for your images may not work. For Pokemon, it's really easy. Each Pokemon has one picture, each Pokemon has a number, so it's very easy to associate the correct image with the correct flashcard for the correct Pokemon. It's also easy to do this when images are presented in a very specific order, like in a casebook. Or if you were extracting images from a PowerPoint presentation and you knew that you had created one flashcard for each slide, it would be very easy to associate the correct picture with the correct slide. Also, remember that if you're using images that you got online or that you've gotten from a textbook, they are almost certainly copyrighted. So use them for personal use and don't share them broadly with other people. And if you do break copyright laws and you get in trouble for it, don't tell them that I showed you how.